Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Aditi. This is going to be game two between Advil and Aegis, part of BSL Season 16, Hostile League Round of 16, Group C. Upper left-hand corner, we have Aegis starting as the blue Zerg, upper right-hand corner. We have Advil starting as the brown Terran. Whoa, that was not what I was expecting out of mouse control. A little bit of a different dust setup, so we'll see if that ends up uh, messing with my camera work at all a little bit, so you have to bear with me today. Eventually, I'll get it. My mouse pad is currently... I'm putting it through the wash because I feel like that is an important thing to do on occasion, but that's also leaving me with a different surface, which is a little bit more tactile. And also, I'm still getting used to my vertical mouse overall. I recommend them. They're kind of weird, but it does help with... Um, I don't know that that's what's been causing some RSI problems, but it does seem to help overall with a little bit of RSI. Overlord heading bottom left-hand corner initially for Aegis. Aegis took game one convincingly in a macro match. It looked like Advil wanted to play more of the mech style and unfortunately not able to keep economically up with Aegis. Aegis overwhelming him with Mutalisk. There are actually stages of the match that I thought Aegis could just go continuous Mutalisk and win it straight out. Opted not to do so. Advil made a game of it, I'll have to say, but match overall ended up going in Aegis's favor. We'll see if he goes for another macro opener. Looks like he is setting up potentially for a 12 hatch. Initial barracks being planted for Aegis. It doesn't look like, or by Advil, it doesn't look like he wants to go for the 14 command center. Is sending out that initial SCV scout. It is possible he can still go barracks into command center, especially spotting this 12 hatchery, which it looks like he is going to right off the bat. But tacking on a refinery once again, which does leave him the open option to go mech. And I actually feel like mech at this particular MMR for whatever reason, is particularly strong. Second Overlord making its way out towards the upper right-hand corner. No drone scout as of yet. The gas also looks like it is going to be grabbed right around the 207 mark, which suggests we're going to see the two-hatch Mutalist build. Advil should be able to go ahead and walk up and scout that, so should recognize that this is, at least for initial view, more of a Mutalist-style opener. There is a nearby third to grab, but I think oftentimes what Zerg will opt to do is go for a further away expansion. Sometimes, oops, reveal entire map. There we go. Just to be able to, to exploit the ramp uh, lurker aspect, although that does create quite a distance if you go for that and you have to maintain vision of your opponent. Looks like we are seeing a factory opener once again. Let's see if this turns into 1-1-1 or if it is just going to be straight mech play out of Advil. It looks like this is going to be two hatch Mutalisk, which tends to fare fairly well against opener mech play. As with opening mech, the Goliaths, there's that window where you don't have a lot of Goliaths or a lot of air coverage, and Goliaths aren't hyper mobile, and so a lot of damage can be wreaked. Havoc can be uh, wreaked. It looks like there is an initial Marine. Overlord's going to crawl all the way to the natural expansion. This is a little bit far for Aegis, and he needs to be careful. He's going to spot that command center, but that Marine, actually, if it moves in position, could kill this Overlord early. All it has to do is position a little bit to the left, and that would be a huge mistake, and on, honestly, potentially a game-winning mistake if the Marine gets on top of it. So now, will the Overlord get back to safety in time? Let's see if it gets back to that corner. Half health, but the other option here is, is actually just lift the barracks and move it forward in position. It looks like the Overlord is going to make it to the safety wall. A Zergling being pushed out to go ahead and distract that Marine and make sure that Overlord remains somewhat safe. But that could have been a critical error. Oh, the Zergling actually gets the kill and is going to continue to interrupt the front. The SCV pulling off briefly. It looks like the SCV dying in the main. The Spire is being constructed. Initial vultures are being built. We don't have any anti-air as of yet. The armory is not yet constructed. I don't know what the timings are for when you need your Goliaths out in comparison to the Mutalisks. Usually, I feel like you just want as many Goliaths as possible. Zergling streaming across the map. It looks like Zergling speed has been researched. The initial vul vulture making its way out. We have a hatchery and drones blockading the way and a second gas being grabbed. The Zergling going to be able to shoot the gap. There is a vulture waiting for it, so it shouldn't get a lot accomplished outside of scout. Ooh, actually able to get a little bit of It went to the south instead. Even with speed, vultures can kite and get a lot of damage done. It looks like a second factory being constructed. And an engineering bay as well, out of necessity. Armory working on plus one armor 
immediately, which will make those mech units a little bit beefier against initial mutilus damage. Spire just about finished. And this is the first Goliath in production. Marines aren't there to support as well. The engineering bay is going to finish. And this is going to be a lot... Oh, actually, Vulture's able to sneak through. I wasn't expecting them to make it through that SimCity at the natural. So drone scattering. Aegis taking some economic, severe economic damage to start. Drone scattering. That's going to empty the main. Just at, And it looks like that's going to force some Zergling construction rather than Mutilus construction as well as that Spire finishes. On top of it, Gas being finished and this is huge wins for Advil early more Zerglings trying to make their way up but really it's going to take Mutalisks to evict these Vultures it looks like some are being constructed but that has plummeted the drone count to 16 also providing time for those turrets to be built and it's going to be distractionary as those initial mules are going to have to deal with the Vultures and the gas completely halted here more drones getting picked off wow the drone count down to 12 and this is putting Aegis in a horrible situation. So the Vulture run by, which I, this was a very small choke to run by and there were drones, it looked like were camped on the way or some Zerglings potentially. So great run by by Advil, but he does lack a good amount of anti-air here. There are several, five mules, sorry, four mules out in the air, more to grow. The Goliath count is filling in nicely and Charm Booster has been finished. Turret near that natural expansion Expect Aegis to just play straight Mutalus from here because that is his only way to get a victory. Third, ar uh, sorry, third factory being constructed. Now the barracks spotting that Overlord able to kill it and that's putting Aegis in the red, which is more trouble. Mutalus diving in towards the main. Two versus five. This is a winning scenario for the Mutalix. Able to chase that down, but the Goliaths that were at the natural expansion creeping up to reinforce. This is kind of that critical moment and Aegis not really exploiting it. These are the critical moments where the Goliaths can't cover all of the territory necessary. There's turrets that are exposed. And right now, however, Aegis letting that window shrink as more Goliaths starting to take the field. And that plus one armor is just moments from finishing, which is greatly going to negate the... Because uh, you can actually think about it alongside the Glaives. It actually does even more as far as defense, especially in groupings. A few SCVs were killed. Aegis trying to replenish that drone count. I think, actually, if Advil just shells up and waits for Max Goliath, really control group, he might even be able to move from there. Fourth factory being planted. Let's see if he supports it with a siege tank. Wouldn't be necessary because with just a single Sutton colony, potentially could break the line. Some Hydralisks and Hydral speed being upgraded to make a combo attack force, but at just 24 workers at eight minutes and this late in the match with Advil's economy not really being touched, five factories being constructed and plus one weapons also coming along the way. I don't know that Aegis is going, unless he takes some risks and grabs some additional bases that he really cannot protect right this second. I will say this, Advil is very much in the dark at this stage, a blind spot. He has no map vision whatsoever. Same thing is true for his opponent. Looks like the micro overlord is making its way dangerously close to the main as well. So we might want to send out another overlord to the field. Looks like an SCV being sent out, but it's very quickly being intercepted. Hydralisks making their way towards the natural expansion. They want to try to get as much damage done there as possible. And there, there could be a possible split attack where the mutalists go towards the main, the hydralists go to the natural for a bust and Aegis plays from there. But the Goliath count is sizable. We got a siege tank on the way. Siege tech also being upgraded. They just currently holding that northern spoke as he gathers his forces. I assume to engage in an attack. He's all in one way or another. And the Goliath count is now massive and really cannot just squash, in my opinion, not just squash these Mutalists, but it looks like it's matching that Hydralist count one for one with some SCVs pulling off the line and some repair, actually more Goliaths than Hydralists at this stage. Unless there's some really messed, missed micro on Advil's part or Contrawise some amazing micro on Advil's part. I expect this attack to falter. SCVs pulling off the line. Turret is down. A few SCVs are dying, but the Goliath's coming out in mass. And here's the other problem. Once this attack is repelled, Aegis has to worry about counter defense. So moving in with the rest of the Hydralists, it's do or die right here. He's managed to get four SCVs total in this attack. The SCV's still trying to defend the front line. The siege check has not been concentrated 
in this attack fire. Now sieging up, which is going to make these Hydralisks even more squishable. Kind of the foot. And now, yeah, there's Gigi from Aegis recognizing that a follow-up counterattack would have completely obliterated him. So that is going to be GG. We're now tied up going into the third tiebreaker match for the tournament life of these two players. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.